from the plains of Alabama. It's homecoming 1991 for the Auburn Tigers. A sold-out Jordan-Hare Stadium is the site of an SEC showdown between the Bulldogs of Mississippi State and the Tigers of Auburn. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender. This has been a very difficult week for the Auburn Athletic Department. They have faced a storm of accusations from former Tiger football player Eric Ramsey, who alleges he received illegal payments from a booster and assistant coaches. At halftime, Pat Dye will respond to the tapes that he says that he has. This Auburn football team has had a week to get ready for this football game as they start their stretch run for the conference title. Working with me is Lynn Swan. And Lynn, this has become one of the most critical games in Pat Dye's 11 years at Auburn. You sense if they lose today, this season could come unraveled. You're right, and it is a big ball game because it's setting up the big contact next week against Florida for the SEC, possibly for an SEC championship. And it's important because it allows the team to focus when they have a big game now. Stan White, the quarterback for Auburn, he is going to have to concentrate and play a great ball game, a balanced attack. He's working primarily on a new offensive system since they had Tommy Bowden come in here as a new offensive coordinator. So he has to put it all together now. And their defense, well, the defense is going to have to play tough football because up against Mississippi State, they play a no-huddle option offense. Jackie Sherrill's a new coach at Mississippi State, and here come the Bulldogs. Sherrill feels that he has the Bulldogs moving in the right direction. They, quite frankly, one of the most surprising teams in the country, Lynn Swan. Jackie Sherrill is a great motivator of young men, and he has to really motivate this team. It's going to be an interesting contest. You know, they only lost to Auburn last year by one point, and they've improved in several categories this year. William Robinson is a quarterback. They call him sleepy. He better be really awake this afternoon. He'll have to lead that option attack. He leads the team in rushing. His arm is somewhat suspect, but he's got to have a real tight ball game today. The defense is going to have to play a great game, especially on the front line. If they can stop Auburn, they really have a chance of winning this ball game. Die and Cheryl, they missed one other time before. That was an 86 Cotton Bowl in A&M under Jackie Cheryl won. Auburn has won nine in a row, including that one-point game that Lynn was just talking about. Great tradition here at Auburn. They call it the Tiger Walk. And what they did before game today was that they had the entire football team file out of Sewell Hall, which is the athletic dorm, and walk down Donahue Boulevard. Four to 5,000 admirers liking them as they headed towards Jordan Hare Stadium for the battle today. And so the SEC showdown is just minutes away. The Tigers against the Bulldogs. We'll be back with the opening kickoff here from Auburn, Alabama in just a moment. The battle cry, War Eagle, as the Auburn Tigers will receive Mississippi State. Won the toss, they deferred. And Chris Gardner, out of Brandon, Mississippi, will be kicking off to Thomas Bailey and Otis Mao. it deep. Bailey will gauge it, has it at the four. Thomas Bailey across the 20, to the 25, to the 30, and Bailey all the way out to the 34. That'll be a 30-yard kickoff return. Stan White, the quarterback for the Auburn Tigers. He has thrown six interceptions. His completion percentage is not what he'd like, and he's still looking for a big play. Reed McMillan is back. He's had some injury problems. Joe Frazier, a redshirt freshman. Herbert Casey has made some big plays at the wide receiver spot. From the 34, Stan White will throw on the first play. A little screen complete to Frazier. He's tackled just short of the 40-yard line. A gain of six. It'll be second and four. Daniel Boyd made the stop. Dan White, who started every game Second last year as a redshirt freshman. Here's the offensive line. Gray, a former tight end. Bob Meeks is the leader. He is a former tackle, now playing center. Blake weighs somewhere in the vicinity of 320 pounds. Second and four from the 40-yard line. Frazier in the backfield along with Reed McMillan. A sprint out this time by White. Frazier coming. He's buried by Daniel Boyd. Mississippi State coming into this game at 23 sacks. Just to add another one, a loss back to the 30-yard line, a loss of 10. We'll take a look at him. 
He comes in this game with 47 solo tackles. He's a leader on that defense. He just shoots a gap in this blitz. White's looking downfield, sees him coming. Instead of getting rid of the ball, he covers up and eats it. Third and 14 now. There is Boyd. Boyd, a transfer for the University of Minnesota. From the shotgun, White. A little shuttle pass forward to Frazier. Did not fool anybody. And it's going to bring up fourth down. That was Coleman and Boyd on the stop. And so, Auburn has their first series short-circuited in a hurry as Terry George will come in and punt the football. Tony James will go back to receive the punt from George. Here's one of the best in the Southeastern Conference. James coming in here. He is sixth to the SEC in punt returns. He is third in kickoff returns. And he's going to be buried instantly. Beautiful coverage that time by Clarence Morton, the starting free safety, but there's a flag back at the 28-yard line. 37-yard punt and obviously no return. The illegal procedure against Auburn. Beautiful coverage that time by the Tigers. The James had no chance. And Matt Dye's had a long week here with all of the accusations that have been forthcoming would like to get his football team started well. And that's not what he had in mind as they're going to bring this back and make him punt it again. Well, his offense holding the ball three plays and then having to punt is not the way he wanted to start out this ball game. He wanted to have the team move it down the field, uh, obviously to try and get points, but at least making sure that they establish better field position for their offensive unit. This it's game could very well boil down to how good special teams are. Both teams have excellent punt return men. And that field position will go a long way in allowing the offenses not to have to be too flamboyant. And so George will be forced to punt again inside his own 15-yard line. The snap is good. This is a better punt. James going back. Has it at the 22-yard line. This is an exciting player up to the 30 and buried there. At the 30-yard line, a 51-yard punt. Chad Mullenberg on the special teams with the tackle, and the Bulldogs have the ball. William Sleepy Robinson will start this drive for the 30-yard line. He has over 1,000 yards of total offense. Fullback Prince, very effective. Tony James and Willie Harris, outstanding wideouts. They actually came away a yard better after taking the penalty and the punt the second time. Here's Robinson rolling out. He dumps it off to Kenny Roberts, and the tailback is close to the 40-yard line and close to a first down. A gain of nine. So that's the kind of escapability he has. His line is led by John James, a 294-pound junior. They've had to move this line around due to injuries. This is the six different starting combinations for Jackie Sherrill. They are not very deep in that offensive line. Second and a yard to go for the Bulldogs. In motion will go Roberts. Prince, the fullback, gets the first down and more as he is lugging the ball across the 40 to the 43. Mike Pina made the stop. Speaking of Pina, let's look at the Auburn defense. Defense that's ranked fourth in the SEC. Wilson, Shea, Cromarty, and Barlow. Barlow very fast, not real big, and the linebackers the strength of the defense. Willis and Crawford and Pierce, they are some trio. And back deep, Barlow, an excellent cover man, and Fred Smith, Jackie Sherrill Fields, hits as hard as any quarterback in the country. First down at the 42. Robinson is keeping this one. Standing out, throwing to the far side, and the connection is made to Willie Harris who Jackie Sherrill said is as fine a player he's ever been associated with at that wide receiver position. 16th catch of the year. They're just short of the first down. Nope, it is a first down. Willie Harris came off a great game, great series of games. He's caught 11 passes for 250 yards in the last three. Again, without the huddle, they go to the ball this time. Boy, your defense has to be ready. This is Prince straight ahead. The fullback inside the 45 to the 44-yard line. Notre Dame jumping on USC quickly. And I know Lynn loved to see that score. Yeah, I'd like to see that 14 on the USC side and the game be a final. Iowa, we had them last week holding out that victory against Illinois. So the line of scrimmage will be the 45-yard line. It'll be second down and eight yards to go. James and Harris split to the near side for the Bulldogs. 
completely to roll. They like to get him rolling. There's a shuttle pass complete to Prince. Prince to the 40, and he'll be very close to the first down. Fred Smith, number six, who we talked about being such a vicious tackler, coming over to make the stop on Prince. And you can see the Smith. problems that Robinson Those could create for you defensively. Pierce. Well, because he's got that quickness of foot, he likes to run, he's got, as you said, escape ability. Seven on the blade. And with the offensive line taking the wide split, you have no idea whether he's going to just play action and pass it or run the option. Third and a yard to go. Now they change their splits in the line. They're going to run some unbalanced line today. Robinson giving off to Prince, and I don't know. Prince straight ahead, a 220-pounder from Vicksburg, Mississippi. He, along with Michael Davis, go, who alternated Dave! that fullback spot. Mike Pelton was on the stop, along with Walter Tate, who's weighing anywhere around 320 today. Jackie Sherrill has been a winner wherever he's been. Pittsburgh, Texas A&M. And they're going to measure to see if, in fact, they got the first down. Georgia, that's one of the opponents Auburn's going to face as they go to Amen Corner against Florida, Georgia, and Alabama. They're short. It's fourth down. That was last night. Desmond Howard with those two touchdown catches set a Big Ten record for touchdown catches in the season with 15, breaking the record of Anthony Carter. It would be interesting here to see if Jackie Sherrill decides to go for it, fourth down early in the ball game, try and get his team up emotionally, psychologically, take the chance now. I tell you, Auburn has not had good success on fourth down. They're 0 for 8 for the year. And here they come on fourth down. They are 5 of 9 on third down this year. I should say fourth down this year. Robinson keeping, and I think he got it. That's where that option offense is so tough. you got to check the fullback out. And then that time Robinson pulled it out, and he picked up the first down. So the first gamble early in this football game. First down at the 35. Monday night on ABC Sports. Kansas City Chief and Los Angeles Raiders from Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Big game in the AFC West, beginning at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific here on ABC. Hand off to Carl Williamson, the backup tailback. And Williamson ducks inside the 35, a gain of two. James Willis made the stop. Williamson was Mr. Football in the state of Tennessee his senior year. He and Kenny Roberts will alternate at the tailback spot. Boy, I tell you, going without a huddle, it just really has got to drive defenses crazy. Well, drive you crazy because on this particular offense, you've got a lot of people spread out to outflank you. You've got to spread your defense. You can't put in a nickel package in an obvious passing situation. You, you can't let down for a moment. Michael Davis is the fullback. Robinson with a deep drop, setting up a screen on the middle, deflected incomplete. Davis was the guy he was trying to get the ball to on the screen, but Auburn seemingly was everywhere. To show you the context of this game, let's look at the SEC. Florida is the only unbeaten team in conference play. Alabama and Auburn, one loss. Everybody else has lost at least two. The thing about Auburn, they can control their own destiny. If they went out, they could win the SEC crown. Because for them, they play both Florida and Alabama later on. Third down, eight yards to go. Harris, James, put to the top of the field. No score. And all kinds of movement. Auburn saying that somebody moved on the line. It might have been Michael Montgomery, the right tackle. Ball before the snap. Ball start. Right tackle. Offense. Still third down. So to be third and 13. Third and 13 as they move it back down to the 38 and a half yard line. Again, Robinson up to the line of scrimmage, making his adjustments, making his call. Rolling out. Nobody open. Tony James, the intended receiver, but he was completely out of bounds. And so after going for it and getting it on fourth down, they come to another fourth down. That's one of those timing plays, Gary, that when the receiver is running into the boundary and the quarterback is rolling the same way, that receiver has got to come inside far enough. 
before he comes back to the outside to make sure he doesn't run out of bounds and the quarterback's running in that direction. And so on a fourth down, we have a change. Todd Jordan is coming in at quarterback. And now he will drop back. Now Jordan is not their normal putter. Mike Riley is. So this is a change. Let's see what's going to happen here. Jordan will pooch it. And he's going to try to angle it out of bounds. Willie Harris is down there and makes contact with the ball. And let's see where they mark it. So Jordan, who is not normally the putter, they bring in the pooch punter. Ends up being a 28-yard punt. Auburn will have it for the second time at the 10-yard line. Championship teams for the Bear in 64 and 65. Of course, Pat Dye said in that year he might have learned more from Jackie than he taught him since he was new. said Jackie Sherrill helped him become a little more familiar with the terminology in the system at the time. Auburn starting deep at their own end of the field just across the 10-yard line. Dan White to Joe Frazier. And Nate Williams, the nose guard, coming from the backside. Very fine nose guard, I might add, out of Houston, Texas. Navarro Community College, where he's an All-American, made the stop. There's Williams. Partners up front with Brown and Keevan. It's not Kevin, it's Keevan, we've been told, is up front of that other defensive end. Coleman and Boyd, they have a handful of tackles between them. They're very, very good. Tony Harris is a strong cornerback. He really hits people. He has three interceptions. But that is a weakness of this football team is their secondary. Second down, six. Here's Frazier again. And Frazier across the 15 to the 17, maybe the 18-yard line. Keith Joseph and Wayne Gandy over there. Gandy. And so Frazier, who was a nose guard in high school, believe it or not, and Mad Dye took... A lot of time to explain how all that happened. It, it he won't was take a triple jumper in high school. You know, one, of the, one of the alumni saw him and said he was uh, second in the triple jump competition. You ought to take a look at him. He called his mother and said, can we come down and talk? Signed him up. Said, I know you're a talented athlete, but you're not going to be a nose guard. And they love him here. Third and three. Dale Overton now will go in motion. Nice fake by White. Throwing up the field, intended for Victor Hall, the tight end, but thrown behind him. White not happy, and so another drive is stalled. It was Mark Woodard who put some pressure on from the linebacking spot. Auburn has excellent tight ends. This guy, Victor Hall, and Fred Baxter, they can play with any tight end in the country. Both of them block well and catch well. Terry George to punt again. He's been busy in the early going. This is James. No score. 7.52 to go in the first quarter. James will haul it in at the 45 of Mississippi State. Inside the 45 to the 40 to 34 yard line of Auburn. That's how dangerous he is. 37 yard punt. 22 yard return. And Clarence Morton eventually caught up with him. Tony James out of Clinton, Mississippi. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. And for the 21st year to the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. First down, good field position for the Bulldogs. Seemingly, they've been at this end of the field the entire first quarter. Auburn hasn't been able to get out of here. Robinson on the option, breaks the initial tackle, and he's got a first down. Fred Smith eventually made the stop. There's that escapability we're talking about. Robinson looked like he was dead in his tracks, avoided the first man, and picked up the first down. Well, part of it's his ability to maintain a balance and keep going, but watch this. This is an out-and-out out missed tackle coming up right here. He should go down. That was Reggie Barlow, number 89, who could have had him behind the line of scrimmage. And it ends up instead being an 11-yard gain to the 22-yard line. In motion goes Williamson. Hand off to Davis, a big fullback. Boy, I tell you, Robinson really took a shot after he made the exchange. They were checking him out to see if he had the ball. And big Walter Tate eventually made the tackle for Robinson. But Robinson got hit by James Willis. It's like, well, I didn't know if he had the ball or not. I was going to be sure. And when you run the option as a quarterback, you are 
target for those kinds of hits, and the official can't do anything about it because you normally are carrying the football. Second and five now for the Bulldogs. Williamson in motion again. Hand off to Big Davis. Strong. Red shirt freshman takes it to the 15-yard line. James Willis made the stop, but it'll be third and three. Davis from Morton, Mississippi. In the estimation of Jackie Sherrill, could be as good as anybody he's ever had at that spot. He's 6'1", weighs 230 pounds. Coming from that small town, he didn't have the maturity he needed, but he's starting to really gain some steam for this Bulldog team. right there that was Tony James number 25 and the rest of Davis is pulling into the end zone that is his fourth rushing touchdown Chris Gardner's point after is up and good and the Mississippi State Bulldogs here on the plains of Alabama have taken a seven to nothing lead did get to the 40 though so that drive capped on the run by Michael Davis he got a tremendous block from Tony James and Auburn has had a tough time getting started the furthest they've been is their own 40 then they went backwards on the sack then the next drive they started just across the 10 yard line and Gardner who added the point after to kick off both possessions three downs and out what was it that uh, Jackie Sherrill said? We'd like to get started well. Get some confidence early. I think they've done that. They certainly have. And what Auburn needs to do now, you know, is take possession of this football and put together a good drive. Not to be flashy, but just get something happening. So far in these draws, Gary, Auburn uh, has been in the hole after the first down. They have, you know, really haven't pushed the ball out on the first down, and they put themselves in difficult second and long situations. Gardner kicking off. This is going to be very short. Alex Smith at the 20-yard line, the backup tailback, and Smith backs up to the 28-yard line and is tackled there after an eight-yard return. Gardner has done a very good job kicking off this year, just didn't get into that one at all, and so Auburn will have good field position at the 28-yard line. He is kicking into somewhat of a win. He had 22 touchbacks on 39 kickoffs coming into this game. schedule you can see what's ahead aim in corner is what Pat Dye calls it this is Reed McMillan the pullback McMillan who's had all kinds of problems with a sprained arch excellent receiver coming out of the backfield out of Selma Alabama they're glad to have him back and apparently well Keel Coleman and Keith Joseph made the stop well McMillan was a starter and he got hurt he came back he was backing up other people now they think he's healthy again. He's a bull. As he gets in, he just powers through people. Orlando Parker has checked in along with Herbert Casey. They're split out. Second and four. This is Frazier, and Frazier very close to the first down. Daniel Boyd made the stop there. They look to the far side, and it's going to bring up a third down. It's not very much short of a first down, maybe a half yard. The line of scrimmage the 37th. It's homecoming here. And there's been a lot of color and excitement all week long as we've come down here. David Housel, the Sports Information Director of Auburn, has been such a gracious host. Up to so much to get ready for this game. Third and less than a yard. Frazier, and he got it. Frazier now right in. That's the initial first down of the game now for the Tigers as Torrance Brown is over to make the stop. That might be a beginning point for the Sauber team. I'm very impressed, though, Gary, early on with the play of the Mississippi State defensive line, front line, and linebackers. 
They have flowed well from side to side, plugged up the holes. Nate Williams doing a great job inside against number 70, Bob Meeks of Auburn. McMillan and Frazier in the backfield. Right on the play action, pressure coming. And he tried to make the connection that time with Frank Sanders. A freshman, a true freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Pretty good coverage that time by Kelvin Knight. They talk about Knight has not been playing with a lot of confidence, even though he did intercept a pass last week. Well, Knight's not a dominant player. If you take a look at this replay, Sanders is going to come across. He's a freshman. He's still learning. Or here he's open. The ball comes in. This is a catchable pass right here. And he just doesn't make the grab. you got to sell out your body in a case like that, Gary. I guess you should be able to talk to that. Second down, 10, just short of the 40-yard line. White with pressure coming. Screen over the middle. It's complete to Baxter, the tight end. Baxter with the first down. And Auburn now on the move to the 44 Mississippi State, a gain of 17 yards. And that's the exact play that the defensive coordinator from Mississippi State said he was afraid of. The defensive line, he said, had to be very aggressive because they want to protect the secondary from a lot of passes, so they're going to go after the quarterback. When you do that, you set yourself up for a screen here. Baxter's back in there blocking as a tight end. After the great acting, he releases. There's a big hole in the middle of the field. Well, I tell you, Jackie Sherrill feels that Baxter is absolutely a big-time player. McMillan, and that's Williams, the nose guard on him again. Gain of one yard. Picked up one yard. Stop made. Number 95. Even Henry is also number assisting on the play. Henry. Take a look at Nate Williams, number 95, in there. He's going up against Second the center. He slices the through the guard, gets in the backfield. And that's a great play by a nose tackle. I tell you, this guy has come on so quickly. Nate Williams. They didn't think he'd be this kind of football player, but they think he has an NFL future. Gain of one. Second and nine now for the Tigers. Frazier, the eye back. Orlando Parker in motion. And they're going to reverse it to Parker. Parker, their fastest wide receiver, is about a yard short of the first down. Lusker over to make the stop. Well, that's an interesting reverse. You start one way and come back the other. Well, you, you, you got to go reverse it in some direction. <laughs> he's got the speed, too. They say probably on the track there, he's about 4 3. Yeah, by far their fastest wideout out of Montgomery, Alabama. He hasn't caught a pass this year, but they've had him run those kind of plays. That was his fifth carry of the season. Third and a yard. McMillan will get the first down. And more to the 25. Kelvin Knight made the stop. I tell you, I like this McMillan. He comes from a small town, a small school in Selma. He set a state high school record scoring 38 touchdowns his senior year. Now watch this. He makes number 70. He takes on the big man, Nate Williams, crushes him down the line to open up that big hole. Number 41, McMillan goes right by number 41, Daniel Boyd, to make the big play. For Morgan Academy in Selma, Alabama, Reed McMillan. 10-yard run. He has three carries for 17 thus far. This is Frazier, and Boyd's got him. Is this guy quick? Daniel Boyd. They call him the captain of the defense. And as Jackie Sherrill says, he's a smart guy. He's a chemistry major. <laughs> you have to be smart. People always they tell you about chemistry and physics. you got to be smart. Look at him. He just takes off. He's going to be aggressive. He attacks. He comes through and makes a stop. Now, again, you know, it's great when you make the play. It's great when they've got that kind of play called against an attacking, aggressive defense. He's got to be careful when they start running the draws and screens. This is the 10th play of this drive. It's second down and 11 from the shotgun is White. White has Smith over the middle. He's also got over the middle Herbert Casey, and Casey cannot make the connection. Daniel Boyd dumped White after he released the football. Number Frankie Luster, number 49, was a man covering on the play. White had hardly any time to make the play. Take a look again at Boyd. He's coming on the blitz. They've got a good play called. When White sees this, he has to know where his receiver is, walk in the air, and give him a little more time. Wow. He did that, took the punishment, but his receiver wasn't able to time the ball up well. Casey, and make the catch. Third down, 11. White was knocked out in a game against Southern Mississippi earlier this year. Could not start the second half. And he took a real shot there. 
Third down, 11, a minute 50 left in the first quarter. White with time. Flaring and intercepted, picked off by Knight. His second interception this many games. And Knight brings it out to the 29. 25-yard interception return. And for a guy who hasn't been playing with confidence, it should be soaring right now. Well, his confidence should be elevated just a bit after that play. White's got good time here. He needs his 10 yards, 11 yards for a first down. But he throws to the man who's got coverage right over the top and the safety who is just hanging in the middle. And for Stan White, he has suffered his seventh interception of the year. From the 29, Robinson and company delayed handoff to Prince. Prince bangs his way to the 40 for a first down. James Willis made the stop, a gain of 11. Let's go to New York now, and here's Roger Twyman. Thank you very much, Gary. Big ACC game, North Carolina State at Clemson. And on the second possession, Rudy Harris takes a handoff and pulls in from three yards out, and Clemson leads it seven to nothing. Let's go back to Gary. Okay, Roger, that's probably for the ACC title. Clemson under Ken Atfield has not lost in Death Valley. This time, nothing doing up the middle. Auburn closed it down beautifully that time. Getting up from underneath is Darrell Crawford, that outstanding inside linebacker. Also, William Prince trying to slant forward, found out how good this Crawford can be. Crawford is averaging 16 tackles a game. Second and nine. Seven to nothing, Mississippi State inside a minute to go in the first quarter. Robinson again. Looks like he's setting up a screen. He hit Kenny Roberts, and a lot of blue shirted Tigers are there. Loss of nine. Boy, did they sniff that one out. Chucky Johnson, Gerald Crawford, and James Willis absolutely were not fooled for an instant on that one. Both those teams are unbeaten. And Holy Cross remains unbeaten. 43-42 over Lehigh. 16 game win streak for Holy Cross. Well, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of defense there either. <laughs> the score of that game. Must have been exciting. But it's third down and a punch. Third and 17. As Jackie Sherrill. Good to see him back in coaching after being out a couple of years. He was in a auto dealership in Houston during that time, and now the head coach as we have come to the end of this first quarter. After 15 minutes, the Bulldogs of Mississippi State lead it 7 to nothing. That's what's great about homecoming, isn't it? All ages coming back to Auburn in this case to celebrate homecoming on the way. As now, Mississippi State starts the second quarter with a third and 17. A little shuttle to Prince, and Prince gets some of it, but certainly not enough of it. James Willis over to make the stop and bring up fourth down. Let's look now at the stats after the first quarter play. Interestingly enough, identical in the total play. And most of those plays for Auburn came on that last drive. Otherwise, they were three downs and out in the first two possessions. You see Mississippi State 56 yards rushing, but they've had field possession, a field position throughout the first quarter. Mike Riley will come in and punt for the first time as Jordan was used earlier on a little pooch punt, and he didn't hit this all that well. Bailey's going to let it bounce around, and it takes an Auburn bounce, and it'll inherit the football at the 32-yard line. Not a very good punt by Riley, a 30-yard punt to be exact. And so the Tigers starting the second quarter with good field position. One of the things that Coach Dye and his coordinators echoed is the fact that, Tommy Bowden in particular, that the Auburn offense has not really had the big play. They've not really been able to come out and make things happen just on, on a spark, on a flash, uh, to get them out of a bad situation and take advantage of certain situations. We have some changes. Teapot Brown is in at fullback, and Alex Smith is the tailback, and White fakes to Smith. Rolling far side intended for Teapot, and he's only 5'6", so he's not a big target to throw to. His first name is Charles, but they call him Teapot. And uh, that time, number 26 had no chance to latch onto that one. Brings up second down. 
Charles, Charles LeVan Brown. Now, if he had jumped up and caught that pass, it would have reminded me of Rocky Blyer <laughs> and Super Bowl 13. Jumped up in the air, caught a pass. Rocky would never have ca caught another day in his life. He wasn't 5'6", though. He's a little bigger than that. Yeah, he was only about 5'6". <laughs> about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, maybe. White, 3 of 7 on 26 yards. Hands off to Alex Smith. He's their biggest tailback at 220 pounds. And he's coming off of a 115-yard game last time out. Of course, they had the last week off, but that was a game against Vanderbilt. He's not been consistent, as an end result has not earned the starting nine. Chris Stallworth made the stop. It's third and a yard to go. Chris Stallworth, a cousin of a former teammate of mine, John Stallworth. I tried to call John last night and this morning. He might be out of town. I don't know. See, John went to Alabama A&M? Correct. Third down and a yard. Hand off to Teapot. And he's got the first down. Just across the 45-yard line. Well, this guy's proving there's a place for some small men in this game. Very popular here at Auburn. Lon Long and Keith Joseph combine on the stop. Hey, this Auburn offensive line is a good one. It's not all that old. They have two seniors starting up front. One of those, Bob Meeks, is one of the best centers in the South. First down just across the 45. White with time. Over the middle. It's almost made by Victor Hall. I tell you, Frankie Luster going the other way looked like he had a crack at the deflection. Hall, who set a peach bowl record, catching nine passes for 74 yards, couldn't quite make the grab. Now, when you talk about big plays, Gary, a big play isn't necessarily one that breaks for 50 or 60 yards and you go all the way for a touchdown. This right here could be a big play. If he just reaches out, makes that catch, holds onto the ball, he puts his team across midfield. Looking at that replay, Lester made a pretty good play. He got a piece of that and kept Hall from making the connection. Second down, 10, just across the 45. Herbert Casey split to the near side. From the shotgun goes White. Double pumping, setting it off to Brown. Brown breaks the initial stop, and Woodard gets him. Mark Woodard, their best outside linebacker. Woodard makes it up. Makes it up, but Keel Colbert came flying through an attempt at the tackle to really slow him up. No gain on the play. It'll be third and ten. We talk about the speed of Auburn's defense. I think this Mississippi State defense has got some speed. That's what Cheryl was talking about. The speed of Auburn's defense. The Bulldogs have been equal thus far. Here is White rolling. He's going to take off. He doesn't run all that much. He's to the 50. Shot to the 45 to 40 and slide. Beautiful ad lib effort by Stan White. Oh, and he picked up a host of blocks along the way. And he decided to run and cut back. He had people scrambling back. Let's take a look at it. It's always dangerous when the quarterback is rolling out and he starts to run, especially when we know that his backup probably isn't quite on the same level. Look at that block right there by Teapot Brown. Right there now, he's, he's coming, scrambling back to his left. Another big block right there by Frank Sanders, a freshman. Pretty heavy move for a freshman. And a 15-yard game to the 39-yard line of Mississippi State. So White trying to make the big play that they need. Here's Alex Smith again. And Smith knocked out of bounds in the vicinity of the 35. A gain of four. Tony Harris over to make the stop. There's Harris out of Town Creek, Alabama. He was a wide receiver in junior college coming over from Hazelwood Community College in Mississippi. As an end result, he has such good hands, and it really avails him well playing that cornerback spot. Oh, he's picked off three interceptions so far on the year. From the 35, second down and six. Tony Russell split to the near side. Herbert Casey to the top of the field. Seven to nothing, Mississippi State. Hand off to Smith, and he's gobbled up. Vicious tackling inside. Keo Coleman is one of those. Boyd is the other. And also Williams. Don't forget Nate Williams. Clemson with a 14 to nothing lead. North Carolina State going in their unbeaten. Three-yard game of the play. Third and three. Well, next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central, ABC's College Football will be back again. Some of you will see the Baylor Bears head to Razorback Stadium to battle Arkansas or you'll see the sixth-ranked Gators taking on the Tigers right here in Jordan-Hare Stadium. Hand off to Frazier, and Frazier to the 30, just short, I think, of the first down. Pretty good stick put on that time by Woodard. 
who may have denied him that first down. I'm looking to the far side to see if it will be fourth down. I think they'll measure. I think they're going to. From where I look, I don't think they got it. Yeah, it looked like his, his body just didn't lean quite far enough to put him in position to make that first down. I asked Jackie Shearer what he missed most being out of coaching. He said, just having the chance to get the most out of a player. He says, I've really taken some blinders off, started to enjoy myself. Well, he says, in fact, I'm even visiting with the media nowadays. <laughs> So coming up in halftime, the Prudential Halftime Report, they're going to be short of the first down, it'll be fourth. Roger and Bo will run down the top 25 scores and bring you the latest college football news and highlights, plus coverage of the Auburn University marching band and also an interview we did yesterday with Pat Dye as he will react to the fact that Eric Ramsey says that he has some secret tapes that he recorded and uh, Pat has a thought about that. Now, remember this, Auburn is 0 for 8 on fourth down. And here they go, fourth down. I guess this is no better time than to break that, right? Now, fourth and inches, you don't have to go too far, but everyone knows about where you're going to run. Frazier Richardson, it's White sneaking forward. <laughs> it's not easy, is it? No, it's not, but from right where I can see, the officials marking the ball, he should have enough for the first down. White's 6'2", 194 pounder, and he lunged forward behind Meeks, the center, and the officials still haven't indicated, now they do, first down. So, for the first time this year, Auburn has converted a fourth down. What they like to do now is avoid the turnover as they had the last time they possessed the football. The interception is about the two-yard line. There's your time. You see the score. Another sellout here. What a magnificent place this is. We talk about playing between the hedges in Athens. There's hedges here that uh, completely surround the field. This is the 11th play of this drive. It started at the 33. White being chased out by Jerome Brown. On the end zone, Tony Russell can't make the catch. Williams defending on Russell. Russell's only caught three passes this year. Boy, that would have been a big one had he been able to latch on to that one. And he's a pretty big receiver. 6'3", 194 pounds. Now, people will say Stan White shouldn't have thrown this football, Gary, because people are covered. He's throwing in the end zone on the scramble. But he's giving his receivers a real chance here to make a play for the ball. Use their height advantage. Use their athletic skills. His receiver goes up. Ball hits him right in the hands. That would be the big play. That should be a touchdown. I think he was certainly wise in throwing that ball. He had a shot at that one in every true sense of the word. Second down, 10. Otis Mounds now comes in a tailback. Tony Richardson's the fullback. Play action, White. He delivers to Fred Baxter, the tight end. Boy, is he a load. Knocked out at the 21-yard line. He is 6'4". They say he weighs 225, but I bet he's bigger than that. Wasn't that the same play he called a touchdown pass on against Texas? Baxter is in the estimation of Coach Pat Dye, and I think it's a real compliment. You can't say it any better than this, a big time player. 6'4", 240, so he runs, catches, he blocks, he does everything well. Third down. Two yards to go from the 21 yard line. Seven to nothing, the Bulldogs. This is Frazier hurtling over, and he got it. First down. Now that's that old nose guard mentality. <laughs> but as a former nose guard in high school, you would feel he's not afraid to mix it up. And a long jumper, a triple jumper. He used it there. All right, here he goes. He's going to just put his head down, go in here, and says, well, I, I better use some of that triple jumping talent here, and boom, get in the air a little bit. He does. And I said when they moved him to running back, he looked like a nose guard for a while. <laughs> Well, you know, O.J. Simpson used to be an offensive lineman. I can, you told me that story. I never knew that. Somebody didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> 14th play now on this drive. Here's a handoff to Smith. And Smith able to wedge it across the 15-yard line. Well, you know, sometimes, Gary, these kids are in high school and they're playing. They, they, you, know, you look at them and says, well, this guy is the, is the biggest guy I have on the team. I don't care how fast he is. I'm gonna, he's pretty tough. I'm going to make him a lineman. And they've got other talents. Let's take a look at... 
Williams here on number oh. 95. He gets blown out, double team. Oh, man. Meeks, number 70, and Eddie Blake, number 66. And when you have a great nose tackle, you've got to double team them, get them off that line of scrimmage. Boy, they just bent him backwards. Second down now, seven yards to go from the 14-yard line of Mississippi State. 16 left to the fast moving path. Right over the middle, a lot of traffic incomplete. Knight almost had another interception. It was Baxter, the tight end, the intended receiver. That ball was forced in there. There just wasn't a lot of room to make a connection. No, he was staring at number 95, Nate Williams, who uh, was able to get off the line of scrimmage, was coming down straight for him. And when he caught the football to throw, he jumped up in the air. Now you watch him right here, White setting up. That's Nate Williams right there. Just, just grazed it under his arm. Well, it's another third down. Another opportunity for the big play. Third down and six. There's three of four and third downs on this just this drive, and they're not going to connect on that one because Smith was covered so well by Boyd. Shows you how Boyd can get out there on those linebacker drops as he got over there, and it brings up a fourth down, and they're going to have to settle for the field goal. Now, Gary, I believe that the 46 defense developed by Buddy Ryan was developed because the Chicago Bears had a lousy secondary and they were trying to protect them, so they put so much pressure. That's exactly what this Jackie Sherrill football team is doing right now, putting as much pressure on the passer because they're not sure if the guys can cover long enough. Jim Von Weil, who's had two blocks this year, is 6 of 12, a 31-yard attempt. He gets it up high, and no, he missed it. Von Weil. It was 6 of 12 previous to that. Misses. And Auburn has not been able to get on the scoreboard with nine minutes left in this first half of play. So Von Weil out of Akron, Ohio, kicked the game winner two weeks ago. 17 plays on that drive for five minutes and 20 seconds and come away with nothing. Advantage Cheryl. Williamson with the ball. Runs away from Anthony Judd. Gets out to the 24, and Alex Thomas, who did not start the game because of a hip flexor injury he suffered on Monday. Oh, he moved the ball to the 24, gain of four. Now, when you look at a play like that, Carl Williams, number 27, is carrying the football. You've got Anthony Judge coming up. He's six feet, 224 pounds. And it looked like he just straight-armed him and stopped him cold in his tracks and just ran out of the tackle. Second down, six. Sleepy Robinson, who was the SEC Player of the Week against Kentucky earlier this year. He was a short yardage quarterback last year for him. Didn't play that much as he gives to Davis. Michael Davis out to the 27. Benny Pierce made the stop there. Boy, when you have the ball, those 17 plays in the 5 minutes and 20 seconds, you don't get anything. That's just got to really take some starch out of your team. Uh, you, you, you've got to prevent that. You, you've got to keep your team in the ball game mentally. Don't let them get down. When they're only seven points down, it could be worse. Third down, two yards to go. This time, two receivers split to the near side. Davis is the running back. They're going to get off instead to Williamson, and Williamson breaks out of there, and he's got the first down to the 38. Carl Williamson out of Stanton, Tennessee, a 14-yard gain. Corey Barlow over to make the stop, and this Mississippi State team is playing tough football. They won their first three, their biggest win, beating Texas, and for Jackie Sherrill, that's not unusual. He beat Texas six straight times, dating back to his days in A&M. Quick pitch, Davis. Davis across the 50 and knocked down at the 49-yard line. Darrell Crawford is over right now. They're just turning the corners on this Auburn defense. Well, that last play, instead of coming to the line of scrimmage, calling out a long play and then executing, the linemen were in a two-point stance. Robinson came to the center, didn't say a word, just got behind her and took the snap and executed. They go on the first sound. I know Jackie Shero said, we'll run that. We won't even get set. We'll just come up and on the first sound go. Here is Williamson and Williamson to the 45. This is just juggernaut football right now. They're just running right at and over this Auburn football. Darrell Crawford made the stop there. Mississippi State, one of the surprise teams this year in the country. They lost a thriller to Tennessee by two. They defeated Texas. 
They were beaten by Memphis State a week ago, but they've rebounded here today. Hand off to Williamson again, and he's inside the 40, a gain of five. Mike Pina made the stop the free safety. Tony James is limping a little bit. He's going to come out of the football game. I think he'll be all right as we have a substitution for him. I've been noticing that Auburn, a team that does like to substitute liberally on their defensive line, even with the quick huddles or no huddles of Mississippi State, they've been able to shovel fresh people in and out of this ball game. Second and five, Williamson again, got the corner. Brett Smith comes up, closes down on him. Mike Pelton is coming off of a 23-tackle game against Vanderbilt was over there. But this guy, Smith, Cheryl kept saying, I've never seen a cornerback hit any harder than him. He is a redshirt freshman. Ufala, Alabama is his hometown. James has come back in. Well, he plays that boundary corner, the short side of the field whenever the defense lines up, and they'll rotate that defense so he is up and run support. Conversely, Corey Baldwin, number 12, one of their best cover people, you won't see him come up a great deal to make those kinds of sticks. On a third and three, Davis is smothered. Make that Prince. Prince, the fullback, is smothered, and it'll bring up a fourth down. And there's Pelton again, redshirt freshman from Goshen, Alabama. Mentioned the 23 tackles he had. That's three off of the Auburn record. So now Jordan will come in to pooch punt this one, evidently, as he lines up at quarterback, and now he's going to call for a timeout. So with 5.23 left, Mississippi State leading by seven. They have a fourth down. Last year, the timeout, then they change punters as Riley comes in to punt to this guy, Bailey. He's second in the SEC in punt returns, averaging 13.3. He had an 83-yard return earlier this year against Ole Miss. He stands at the 10-yard line. Riley, wobbly kick. Gonna let it hit, and the ball is going to make it in for the touchback. So at the 20-yard line, Auburn will set it up there. That's a 39-yard punt. So homecoming thus far, not going Auburn's way. They trail 7 to nothing. Fifth meeting, and over the years, they played it in six different locations. Montgomery, along with Birmingham, Jackson, Starkville, and Columbus in Mississippi. And today, of course, on the plains of Alabama, Auburn. Jordan-Hare Stadium sold out, 5.15 to go in the first half. Joe Frazier running and hit hard as he comes to the 22 tell you, Chris Stallworth, who was a cousin of John, who was uh, Lynn Swan's teammate in Pittsburgh, nailed it. I mean, he bent him backwards. There he is, 255-pound sophomore from Moss Point, Mississippi. You know what's interesting about the 17 plays? That's as many plays as Auburn had the football the entire first quarter. But again, did not get on the board. And as many points. Uh, Otis, <laughs> Ma, Otis Mounds is now coming to tailback. Here's Overton in motion. This is Mounds running with the ball. Husker misses him, and over there is Tony Harris to knock him down. Third down five now. Here is Mounds, who, interestingly enough, his freshman year, he was sitting in the stands for a ball game. They had so many injuries. They brought him in, and he played in the game, then got hurt the next week in practice and had to take a medical red shirt year. How many guys come out of the stands to play in a football game? Isn't that the story about the 12th man in, in Texas? <laughs> in Texas A&M? Now the Mad Dogs, what they call them at Mississippi State. Jackie Sherrill continuing that tradition. Third and five. White pressure coming and broken up. You know, one thing I've noticed in watching tapes, Lynn, is how many passes Stan White has knocked down in front of him. People getting their hands up. This time it was Herman Carroll, number 96. And White now is 5 of 15 for 34 yards. And you would think for a quarterback who stands at 6'3", 200 pounds, that would not be a problem. Uh, but he is, not, he is not finding the proper lanes to throw into. He's got to see the lanes, step to the side, throw in an open area. But now to Tony James. James to the 37. And James, very resourceful runner, pounded as he reaches the 45. 38-yard punt, an 8-yard return. Al Nash is down there. Mississippi State with the lead. They have the football to 45. Here are scores from other games. In the second quarter, Washington 1991. Which one would you vote for, Lynn? 
I vote for all of them. Robinson throwing up the middle off of Kane, incomplete. And that one float with the guy standing here in the blue pants and the white shirt. Auburn would love perhaps to have him over there signaling a touchdown right now. Oh, look at this. East Carolina's only loss is to Illinois. You remember the controversy in that game? They had a demonstration penalty against them that might have cost them that win. That's pretty impressive. Bill Lewis, the head coach there. East Carolina considered that their biggest game in history, and they won it. Second and ten. Robinson, sprint draw hand off to Prince. And he brings it out to the 50. Benny Pierce making the stop there, a gain of five on the play. The defensive offense really playing into the hands of this option offense of Mississippi State. They're reading, they're initiating, they're initiating contact and then just reading, Gary, while the offensive line for Mississippi State is coming off the ball, firing out at them. So they're getting a jump on them each play. And this is an offensive line that's been nicked and beaten and now playing in their six different starting combination. Third and five, Robinson will be sacked. Barlow is the guy that got him down, number 89. Reggie Barlow, out of Albany, Georgia, loss of seven. That's his fourth sack of the year. He's not a real big guy, but the coaches say he can run, and he was back in Robinson's face in a hurry. He got there in a hurry, and he just barely hung on there, Gary. Fourth down and 12. Bailey back to receive this punt from Terry George. Correction, Mike Riley. Riley gets it off to Bailey for five. Up to the 10. He's up to the 20 yard line. Bailey's been hobbled with an ankle problem, and they haven't been practicing him that much. He did a good job on a 13 yard return, a 52 yard punt by Riley. Tonight, after Who's the Boss, Maggie and Carol do some mother dog. Can you ride a horse? Oh, I can ride the horse extremely well. Ah, uh, you're such an athlete. <laughs> First down to the gate team. I can stay on them when they jump, too. Here's White on first down, going to throw in a lot of trouble, gets off the screen to Smith. Alex Smith out to the 22. Tell you what, he had in his face Keith Joseph, and he got bumped pretty well and eventually brings it out to the 22. And so White still trying to negate some of this pass rush, trying to utilize the enthusiasm of Mississippi State, and Mississippi State's playing it pretty well, a gain of four. They are playing extremely well. Second and six, 2.21 left in the first half. Seven to nothing, the Bulldogs. Teapot Brown now, along with Smith in the backfield. Hand off to Smith. And Smith trying to get to that first down. He needs to get to the 28 and a half yard line. Herman Carroll, 96, out of Natchez, Mississippi, there to make the stop. Going to bring up a yard to go. Third and a yard to go. You see the time remaining. 145. Reed McMillan, Joe Frazier coming in in the backfield. Right, short hand off the ball is fumbled. I think Boyd has it for Mississippi State, and he does. Reed McMillan, the fullback, and Stan White never did completely make the exchange, and Boyd alertly comes up with a second turnover by Auburn. Go, 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 go! Hey, I like this Boyd. He just seems to be everywhere on this football team. We'll take a look at the ex exchange here. Stan White's got the ball. He's reaching for McMillan. Gets the ball there. McMillan just doesn't hold on to it. So the turnover sets the ball up to the 26-yard line of Auburn, and now Mississippi State's going to use their second timeout. They have one remaining. A sleepy Robinson will go to the far side with Coach Jackie Sherrill, and a minute 32 left to go. That's Watson Brown, the offensive coordinator, the former Vanderbilt coach with him. Sleepy Robinson back in. The Bulldogs with one timeout remaining. A minute 32 left in the half for the first down at the 26. You know, I'll tell you, Lynn, something that really you got to think about. You wonder how the distractions this week have affected this Auburn team. Well, right now, in this first half, they have played very flat. They've made a number of mistakes. They don't really seem to be in this ballgame. Here is Williamson. Nice cutback. And for all that, he got a couple of yards. 
James Willis. Boy, is he something special. He's finally coming back from the knee surgery he had at the end of last year. He is a natural football player. They say his instincts are razor sharp. Second down, eight. Robinson rolling near side. He's going to take off. He's at the 20 and gets out of bounds to the 18-yard line. Shows you again his speed. Robinson out of Jackson, Mississippi. Carroll says he is a big league runner and trying to improve his passing. Trying desperately to improve his passing, but when you take the ball from the center, you sprint out to the sideline like that, those linebackers can't come up in close because always around him and down the field, not a long way, are receiver or, or running back someone he can dump the ball off to. You see that number 97 on Jackie Sherrill? I want to talk about that in just a moment. Third down two. They're two of seven on third down conversions thus far. Robinson in trouble. He gets rid of it and avoids a long loss. Somehow, with John Wilson in his face, Robinson got rid of it. The little 97 that is on Jackie Sherrill's shirt. We'll get to that after this play. You watch now. The official will call this ball dead if he thinks he's down. But right here, watch his knees. They're not down. He gets up. Oh. He, he was down. Well, they say he was not. And it's fourth down and two. And Gardner now will attempt a 35-yard field goal. Chris Gardner, 7 of 10 for the year. And one block this year. The kick is on the way. And Mississippi State has taken a 10 to nothing lead. I want to go back to story. See the little 97 on Jackie Sherrill's shirt. That is to if he commemorate around, and uh, also in memory of Rodney Stowers. The defensive end who died this year, he suffered a broken leg in the Florida game, had complications from that, and died. As an end result on the football field, back at Scott Field in Starkville, they have a 97 put on the field. The players are wearing it. There it is, 97. Rodney Stowers, everyone tells me what a terrific young man he was. He's been missed. In fact, it still affects this Mississippi State team a little bit. The coaches are telling me that Byron Jordan, who usually starts at center for Mississippi State, has not started today because he still is affected by the death of his close friend, who also, he's a very good friend, of Rodney Stowers girlfriend so it's it has implications far after the passing away of the young man but right now Gardner has given the Bulldogs a 10 to nothing lead had very good field position. Their average field position is on the 24-yard line. Mike Swanson, our statistician, points out, on the other hand, Mississippi State has started an average drive from the 44. That's pretty good. That's a fast difference. 20 yards. Gardner kicking off. Bailey going back. And that's the kind of kickoff you expect from Gardner. And they'll touch it down and bring it out to the 20-yard line. See the little 97 also on the helmet there. Continuing that story of a moment ago. Well, 54 seconds on the clock for the first half of action. I don't think Auburn is going to take too many chances here. I think they'll just run the play out, run the clock out, get in, try and regroup, and Pat Dye has to find out just what's happening in the minds of this ball player. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I, I'm convinced that this football team needs something good to happen. They've had four drives of three plays. 10 nothing Mississippi State. White from the shotgun. Double pumping. Sets up a screen. It's complete to McMillan. McMillan breaks the tackle and brings it out to the 24. Daniel Boyd, who's just been everywhere, omnipresent, over there to make that stop. You see the time? 39 seconds. The time without the huddle. White from the shotgun once again. Three wideouts on the play. 24 seconds. He releases it to McMillan again. McMillan tackled. Looks like he has him enough for the first down. They'll stop the clock to move the sticks with 19 seconds left in the half. Keo Coleman, number 34 over there. Out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. By way of Navarro Junior College in Texas. And now timeout will be called by the Tigers of Auburn. 
With 19 seconds, Auburn now has two timeouts remaining, and Stan White evidence against Pat, and Pat will have a comment about how he feels about that. From the 30 now, with 19 seconds, first down. White, gonna go as deep as he can, waits for Overton to clear, the ball deflected incomplete, and that was Boyd. Boyd with a deep drop, coming back, got a piece of it. Stops the clock with 12 seconds. Auburn looking to have some positives to take into the locker room with them at halftime. But the way they've been performing here in the first half, I don't think they're going to be in position for the field goal or, field goal or touchdown. On well, the they play had that 17-play drive and missed the 31-yard field goal. On the other hand, Mississippi State hit a 35-yarder and then scored on a 15-yard run by Davis, the fullback. White back again, going up top, far side, Bailey almost intercepted. Williams picked it off, but he was out of bounds. Edward Williams over there defending on the play. That'll stop the clock with six seconds. It's third down and ten. Well, Pat Dye said, I'm a tough guy. I grew up in Georgia. I've been through adversity before, and he said, I'm going to fight this situation. Not going to resign, and we'll wait to see as the story unfolds. And, and I don't understand why so many people have been saying, you know, have threatening or saying he should resign or, or take a look at it. No one knows what's on the tapes yet. That's exactly right. Third down 10. White mishandles the ball. And Auburn better get on it or Mississippi State could get a field goal, but time has expired anyway. It took so long to sort that out, the clock expired. And kind of a rather unusual way to end this first half. Heel Coleman had recovered it. 10 nothing Mississippi State will return with halftime activities after this message and a word from our ABC State Birmingham. And kind of a rather unusual way to end this first half. Neil Coleman had recovered it. 10 nothing Mississippi State will return with halftime activities after this message and a word from our ABC State Birmingham. Amen corners ahead and a loss today would really hurt their cause as they try to win the Southeastern Conference. Kicking off. Kenny Roberts at the 5. He'll bring it up to the 15, to the 20, and drop there at the 22-yard line. Well, you look at the stats, the one that really jumps out at you is the three turnovers. That last snap of the first half was a turnover. They fumbled the ball, and Mississippi State got it. It makes two fumbles and one interception uh, that Auburn's given up in the first half you know and surprisingly that they're both equal in the total number of yards with mississippi state obviously being able to convert and get points out of this whole thing both times the mississippi state started inside the auburn end of the field they scored they've been very opportunistic An interception and two fumble recovery hand off to carl williamson he is nice down for no gain there's barlow played very well in the first half and I would assume that Pat Dye in his style got the attention of the Tigers in the locker room at halftime. Robinson five of nine passing. Davis, Williamson about equal as far as the rushing is concerned. They've distributed the ball around. Second down, 10 yards to go. Tony James puts it the near side as Robinson now relaying the information without the huddle. Play action, rolling near side. He's got some running room up to the 25 and gets out of bounds at the 27. James Willis, closing speed. You could see how well the linebackers could run. Looked like he had a lot of running room, but all of a sudden it was narrowed down by this guy, and it's third down and five yards to go. Boy, can they run. Yeah, Willis using some great speed to get out there, but it was 89, Reggie Barlow, the defensive end position. As they took off at the snap of the ball, he just sliced down inside, was not even concerned about contain. You've got to stay upfield. Third and five for the Bulldogs. Davis is the fullback. Williamson in a slot to the near side. Crowd starting to murmur just a little bit here. Robinson throwing on target. Willie Harris first down, and that's a big completion for this Mississippi State team. 13-yard gain, and Robinson had that ball right on the button. He had that one, Keaton. Let's take a look at number 87, Harris. She lines up top of the screen. He's just running a little hook. They're playing zones. Everybody's back off of him. He makes a good little spin move to get away from Mike Pina. 
And it was number 12, Corey Barlow, who comes up for the stop. Boy, Harris, good-looking receiver. Two catches for 23 yards. Give to Davis, and Davis might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Walter Tate, huge. There he is. But they call him a big old heavy. That's what they said about Walter Tate. He made the stop there. Now, he, at 330 pounds, all right, this guy was a fullback in high school. Can you imagine that? I can't. He can be anything he wants to be when you're that big. Skeegee nearby winning in Hampton as we catch up to date on what's happening here in the state of Alabama. Second down, about 11 yards to go. They go to the wishbone this time. Hand off to Davis, and Davis runs into a crowd as he crosses the 40 to the 42. Yeah, Davis is strong. Fred Smith was there first. Tim Cromarty also there. It's third and eight. But this guy, he just lumbers over you. Michael Davis. He's averaging, coming into this game, 7.8 yards a carry. Look at the second half. Mississippi State has been a very good second half team. Third and eight here. Robinson, backside pressure, throwing Harris can't make the catch. Robinson hit very hard by Benny Pierce, and Robinson is hurt. That was a backside linebacker blitz. Pierce, untouched, got to Robinson, and Robinson is down. Take a look. You see Robinson dropping back. Look at the pressure coming from the backside. Number 97 coming in, Benny Pierce. I'm telling you, when you do not see it coming, it hurts worst of all. Oh, man. And Robinson looks like it might be a shoulder. Now, you look at their quarterback situation. Robinson could not play in two games this year. Greg Plump, a backup from Hattiesburg, Mississippi, started two games. So they do have some experience at the quarterback spot, as opposed to Auburn, who comes into the game with Stan White and Stan White, because they have a true redshirt freshman as a backup coming into the game. Now, Robinson up. Let's hope he can continue. Well, if you're going to get hurt, this is the time to do it, Gary. When it was fourth down coming up, your team's going to punt. You've got a series of downs. At least you can check yourself out, maybe get yourself ready to come back into the ball game. Riley to punt. Bailey goes back for Auburn. 10-0 Mississippi State. Big rush! Did he get a piece yes, of it? He, did. he may have. It was Barlow, Corey Barlow, who went knifing in. The ball will end up at the 27-yard line. He either got a piece of it or he certainly changed the direction of it. 30-yard punt is what it ends up being. He got a piece of it earlier in the first half. Fred Smith came in on a punting situation, and he looked like he could have got a piece of the ball. This time it's number 12 Barlow. Now watch as he comes in from the right. He's really going to be on top of this punt. Right there. Just makes it gets a piece of it. So they're lucky to get 30 yards out of that one. We'll be back. Eight by ten. That's a shot of Sleepy Robinson. He's trying to shake off that injury to his shoulder. Maybe return when the Bulldogs get the ball. Right now, Auburn has it at the 27-yard line. Handoff comes to Frazier. Frazier bursts out of there across the 35 to the 37. Uh, gain of nine, Keith Joseph made the stop. There's Joseph. And so you sense the crowd getting into this a little bit, and maybe that can give this Auburn team a lift, as you see White in the first half really struggling. Not having a good day at all. Smith, Frazier not carrying the ball a lot. No one's really picking up any big yardage. Ball evenly distributed in the passing game. That was that same old problem. They can't come up with a big play. Second down and a yard to go. And this time, Frazier's going to be stormed down for a loss, and that's Nate Williams. Williams just exploded into that play. See why they think he's going to be playing on Sunday next year. This is what Auburn had. That one 17-play drive ended up in a field goal they missed from 31 yards. 17 yards in that one drive, as many plays in that one drive as they had all of the first quarter. And so now it's going to be third down and four after that loss. Big play that time by Nate Williams. White to Frazier. Frazier trying to get to the first down marker. Going to be close. 
Rager firing into that pile at six foot, 190 pounder from Lanier High School in Montgomery. A little cutback on that play that time. They had everybody going a little bit to the right. They do pick up the first down. Big Nate Williams on the inside, Gary. Made contact. He read the play going to his left, ripped it, and they cut it back away from him. And so that's maybe a beginning point for the Dodgers football team as they have a first down across the 37. 10-41 left in the third. 10 to nothing, Mississippi State. In the ball game is Orlando Parker. He is a sophomore out of Montgomery. Right back to throw. And he's going to Parker, and they collide and go down. He ran up the back of the defender, Frankie Luster. And the ball harmlessly falls at the 15-yard line. When you look at the way that Parker was running the angle across the field, he's running more across the field, but that pass was thrown downfield. So he's got to make that adjustment to cut it up the field. You take a look at this low end zone shot that we have. You know, the ball comes flying out. Parker's going to try and adjust downfield for the defensive back has the coverage there. Well, as we said before, there is Plump now who may come in in place of Robinson. He has been diagnosed as having a bruised shoulder and having a tough time even lifting his arm. Back to throw is wide on second and ten over the middle. Incomplete back to the intended receiver. Keo Coleman is in the face of Stan White. Number 34 came in on a blitz. He was barreling down. The tunnel there on Stan White. Stan White got rid of that ball quickly, as he should have. Could have been a better pass. He had a receiver who was open. You know, you wonder how long it's going to take Stan White, Tommy Bowden, the new offensive coordinator, to get this offense going. It has not happened yet, and obviously today. Look at those numbers. 8 of 22, 48 yards, and a pick. Third and 10. Williams. He's getting rid of it. He completes it to Baxter and a fairly tight end got the first down. Oh, is he something in the open field. 14-yard gain. You don't want to get in front of him. Tony Harris eventually had to, and he made the tackle. That was a good effort by Stan White to avoid being tackled, being sacked. Got away from a couple of good rushers. Nate Williams, number 95, man who's been a problem all afternoon putting on the pressure to find the tight end downfield. And Gary, to me, that's a big play. Maybe not a lot of big yardage, but critical third down play. And Baxter, the go-to guy. You see his catches for the day. First down now at the 49-yard line. Play action fake by White. Gets a big block on Stallworth. Now Coleman's over there. He avoids Coleman, and he's picked up in the 40. That's and White showing some escapability himself that time. Scrambles for eight. Arley Gibson, who'd replaced Williams at nose guard. There he is, number 90. Eventually got a hand on him, but that was a fine piece of running by Stan White. Excellent piece of running. I think some, a little bit of frustration. Uh, but maybe he's Second coming out saying, now, Gary, if I roll out to throw a pass, these guys aren't open. I'm just going to take off with the ball. Make them think about something else now. Make Mississippi State have to worry just a bit more. At the 40 now. Second down, two yards to go. Two receivers, Overton, along with Casey, split to the near side. Pitch to Alex Smith. Smith got the first down. Boy, he, at 220 pounds, is tough to stop in that yardage. Keo Coleman again on the stop. Alex Smith, they feel, could be as good as any running back they've had in some time, but he's just been so unpredictable, so inconsistent. Coming off of the big game last time against Vanderbilt. He's had a variety of small injuries here and there, Gary, and just kind of nicked up, and he's, and which has caused some of the inconsistency on the football field. So you take a look at the action of that last play. Well, he sticks it in there tough, doesn't he? Well, he does. Ninth play now of this drive that started from the 28-yard line, from the 36. Here's Smith again. Tony Harris tries to crawl up and get him and cannot, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 32 by Luster. Gain of four. Well, that's a heads-up play by Tony Harris, Gary. He's coming in off the corner position. Receivers tries to tries to block him. He comes down, skims down that line of scrimmage, forces the back to at least go around him, allows the defense to pursue the chance to come up and make the, make the tackle. Yeah, he was on the ground. He'd been knocked down and tried somehow to get up. There's some of the more interesting scores in this area and this uh, weekend as we close out the final weekend of October, football-wise. Second down, six yards to go from the 32. Hand off to McMillan. Big pullback to the 20th. Booms his way to the 16-yard line. Tony Harris made the stop. And right now, Auburn.
Auburn playing with enthusiasm. I'll tell you, two yards for McMillan on the day. McMillan looks like and plays like a wrecking crane. I mean, he's he's not a big guy. He's just round and strong, 215 pounds. He just puts his head down. Good balance here. And he's not going to try to avoid anybody. He's just going down the field, putting his head down, running over people. He's looking for somebody to hit. 12-yard <laughs> gain on the play to the 16-yard line. 8-16 to go, third quarter. Auburn, their pressing drive right now, trying to get him on the scoreboard. Frazier with the ball. He's straight ahead of the 10 to the 5. And you can see the emotional lift that's occurring now for Auburn. The crowd and the players. An 11-yard gain by Frazier. First and goal at the 5. This is getting mad football, Gary. Get mad at yourself, get mad at the opponent, and then take it out on the opponent because you didn't play a very good first half. Boy, sometimes you think you're ready to play, and you aren't. Right now, they appear to be ready. This is the deepest they have been in Mississippi State territory. Earlier, they'd gotten as far as the 14. First and goal outside the five. Frazier. Frazier just short of the goal line. Frazier can. Boy, he sticks it in there tough. Right now, Auburn is playing what play. some coaches call slobber knocker football. They just knock you backwards. Slobber knocker football. Second and goal. Oh, that's the kind that hurts. Well, it'll be interesting. This is a this is the first opportunity I really have noticed in the game, Gary, that the Auburn offensive line is now in the position just to go toe to toe with that Mississippi State defensive front. Nate Williams, number 95, Brown, Henry, all playing good football. Makes the big man at center. 13th play of the drive. They've rushed nine times and passed three. Mishandled snap. And McMillan did get the exchange, and it is buried there. Thank Boy, that would have been dangerous. White somehow, alertly, after the ball had hit the carpet, came up with it, got it off, and they gained nothing, but they did avoid the turnover. Look at this. He gets re He's real low on this snap exchange. He drops it, gets it up. But the defensive line, Boyd, number 41 in there on the stop, the defensive line make good penetration. Boy, I tell you, that Boyd is something. We keep mentioning how tough he is out of South Haven, Mississippi, a junior. What they need right now is somebody who can just take this ball and slot. Right over the top. Goal from the one. Baxter in motion, hand off to Frazier. He's not going to get in. They rolling down outside the one luster, number 49, submarine under, and knocks the legs out from under him. Fourth down. Tough play. Take a look at it. Joe Frazier, number five. Here's a stick right there. Good tackle. Stays well, low, takes his legs right out. The crowd doesn't like it, but they're going to settle for a field goal. This will be an 18-yard attempt. Further, you might recall, Van Wild missed from 31. This kick is up. The kick is good, and Auburn is on the scoreboard. Well, they wanted to go for it. The fans did on fourth down. Anti says, let's get something out of this drive. And they now trail 10-3. to three. Hey, no toilet paper on the tree. Unless, of course, Atlanta wins tonight. And they'll be out <laughs> early in the morning decorating. Well, yeah, they're one chop away from winning the World Series. Look at that drive. That's the second long drive. They had a 17-play drive earlier, missed the field goal. This time, Van Wilde connects from 18 yards. That was an impressive drive. 11 times on the ground. And this kickoff by Van Wilde will not return this way. So at the 20, Mississippi State still with a seven-point lead, 5.38 left in the third quarter. Next Saturday, 1.30 Eastern, 12.30 Central, and 4 Pacific, ABC Sports begins coverage of golf's richest event. Paul Azinger, Corey Pavin, and more join an elite list of this year's top money winners to determine the player of the year. It's the Tour Championship. Coverage begins next Saturday here on ABC. Sleepy Robinson is the quarterback. He's going to be able to continue. That was the big debate after being hit earlier. And he's going to hand off to Prince. Prince for five, six, seven, nine yards. And knocked down short of the 30. So Cunningham made the stop. And Robinson, tough customer after that shot he took. Hit running the team as Carrickon Cunningham was in on that stop for Auburn along with Anthony Judge. We should say that uh, Robinson continues in the ball game, but we'll find out whether or not he can throw if they indeed let him put a pass up in the air. Fred Ward is split to the near side, wearing number one. 
junior college transfer. Hand off, no place to go. Cunningham was there as Prince had no place to go that time. Boy, Clemson make it a big statement in the ACC. Many people feel that will determine the ACC championship, the winner of that game. Third down now, three yards to go, a loss of two. Sets in the near side again. This homecoming crowd now starting to make some noise here at Jordan Hare. Robinson wanting to throw, throws, and Ward, did he get it? No, he did not. It hit the ground. Very close. I didn't see Robinson's arm bothering him on the throw, but you wonder. He's worried low, now into the ground. Gary, this really has been throughout the day the offense of Auburn put aside the fact that they have not been able to really do a lot in the first half. A defensive contest all the way, primarily in the defensive and offensive line. Riley to punt to Baylor. Big rush again by Corey Barlow. Boy, he hammers this one. Got all of this one. And it's going to roll inside the five all the way into the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20, and that will be a 73-yard punt. 10-3, Mississippi State. It's not Waterford Crystal or a Hasselblad lens. It's a headlamp. And if you think that's impressive, wait till you see what's attached. Introducing the new Lexus ES300 Sport Sedan. It was a good day for ideas. Plans for a sidewalk cafe were finalized. A river walk was proposed. And someone had the vision to bring luxury and romance back to train travel. Keep those ideas coming and we'll keep making them look their best. Laser Jet Printers, from Hewlett Packard. You won't believe the shop back. It comes with a surprise. So where's the surprise? In a minute. First, this baby picks up stuff like nails and glass, and like a regular shop back, it also picks up water. So where's the surprise? Just watch. You twist the top, lift it off, and you've got a surprisingly powerful blow-up. And don't forget to get Steam Team, the attachment that turns any shop vac into a powerful carpet cleaner. If you own a house or carpet, you got to own a shop vac. Well, Auburn has won nine in a row against Mississippi State, but boy, did it get down to the very end last year. Mississippi State able to score to move within one with about two and a half minutes left in the game. And then Darrell Crawford blocked the point after. And... Auburn prevailed 17-16. And where we are right now, it's 10-3, the Bulldogs will lead. 4-11 left. By the way, that punt of 73 yards is not a school record. The record is 84 yards by Mike Patrick. Auburn now will start for the 20-yard line. Stan White playing some catch-up football. Gives McMillan, and here he comes. A quick fullback across the 35 knocked down at the 37 there is a penalty flag though back at the 22 McMillan has really given this team a lift you can see emotionally his intensity and it's going to bring it back Luster and Knight the two safeties in on the tackle I think maybe Meeks might have been holding Williams a little bit that's what uh, we've been told up here number 70 thus far Georgia getting ready for their battle with uh, Auburn in a couple of weeks. Their win. Florida, Alabama, and Tennessee. You think Johnny Majors and uh, Gene Stallings might be watching this game today? Yeah. Along with Steve Spurrier. Yep. November 30th in Birmingham. That's when Auburn meets Alabama in Legion Field. At the 10-yard line after the penalty, it's first and 20. 52 left in the third quarter. 10-3 Mississippi State. 
Straight ahead football this time. Joe Frazier. Frazier wedges it out for a couple of yards. Not much more. Auburn would like to get out of harm's way here and get this drive going. That was Carroll on the stop. Again next Saturday, as we continue our coverage of college football, Baylor heads to Razorback Stadium in Fayetteville to battle Arkansas. Or these Auburn Tigers will meet the six-ranked Gators of Steve Spurrier. There will be other regional action, but boy, what a game that will be a week from today here in Jordan-Hare. Baxter and all back in. Double tight in alignment. White rolling out. He's flushed out. Gets a complete to Baxter. And Baxter will not have enough for the first down, but he gets a lot of it back. Jay White did a lot of running on that play. Eventually got it to Baxter. It was Herman Carroll who was chasing him back near the goal line. And this guy, Gibson, eventually made the tackle. Line of scrimmage at the 24. Well, you know, a little play action to hold the line and the linebackers. He scrambles. He's looking. He really wants to go deep. But right here, he can't. Finds his tight end over the middle who picks up some big yards. Boy, he's a big target and a sure target. Baxter with yet another catch. He's four for 51. Third and six now for the Tigers. White over the middle, broken up beautifully, intended for Hall, and here comes the play. Luster is going to be called for interference. That was a late flag, but it got there. What? It was just a long flag. He had to reach back in that pocket and throw it way across the field from the sideline. What he's going to call on Luster, Gary, is on the play, Luster comes around to make, to make the knockdown, but his hand is on his shoulder. His right hand is just on his shoulder right there, and that's what the official's calling. Wow, that wasn't all that flagrant, though. Well, it doesn't have to be flagrant. <laughs> just touch one of those wide receivers, uh, and that's you, it. You wide You're receivers there are a bunch of sissies anyway. Uh, you got to have part. all of that help. I tell you, you wide receivers, you never gave a defensive back any credit. <laughs> I've given defensive backs respect. <laughs> okay. I've never given them credit. <laughs> Luster out of Fort Myers, Florida, a very aggressive player. They think he's going to be an outstanding player, just a sophomore, but that will make it first down. Sets it up now at the 26, so Auburn digs out of the first and 20 hole. White, deep drop. Victor Hall, he goes right back to the tight end, and Tony Harris made the stop, and White right now is finding his two tight ends as the guys to go to, and both of them have been very effective. Well, the linebackers, when they have not been blitzing, have been taking pretty good drops. He's not been able to get the field down, the ball downfield to his deep receivers. So now he's just taking a safer route, coming underneath, working the short passing game, controlling the ball offensively with his tight ends. Gain of seven, second down, three. 143 left in the third. White pitches back to Smith. Smith the 35, the 40, and he's got the first down as Daniel Boyd with yet another tackle. Tell you, this Auburn team is a different football team right now. They are coming after people and knocking them backwards. Just some credit to that offensive line. War Eagles got to like the way the Tigers are playing right now. What a beautiful, beautiful game. War Eagle number six. Yep. His, his name, actually, they call him Tiger. First you know, after the real mascot. Ten points off the turnovers in the first half. Auburn now coming back in the second half. One of those drives culminating in a field goal. The last one. Pitch comes back to Smith again. And Smith will be straightened up by Woodard. Knocked out of bounds at the 42-yard line. One yard game. I really like the way the defense of Mississippi State is playing, Gary. Herman Carroll, number 96, was on that last play. Looked like he got blocked, and he was crawling. Crawling to get in the backfield to throw a hand out, trying to trip up the ball carrier. I mean, they are scraping and scrapping for every inch of territory, trying to stop this Auburn offense. And a very young Mississippi State team. They only have two seniors really contributing much on this football team. They're going to get better. And Jackie Sherrill says this can be a winning program. He said we just need the mentality change a little bit, and he's trying to do something about it. Second and nine, give to Frazier. There's Boyd again. Also give an assist to Jerome Brown, who closed in. Not much doing on that play. Boyd, who's had so many good games this year, he had 16 tackles against Florida and Tennessee. and was the SEC Defensive Player of the Week against Texas earlier this year. 
You're campaigning, Gary. You're campaigning. Oh, he's got to be a candidate for our MVP. Oh, he does. I, but I, as I said before, he and Nate Williams, number 95. Nate's been in the center of that line, battling it out against the best lineman for Auburn, number 70, Meeks. And he's really causing havoc down there. And you're campaigning. I'm Third campaigning. down and seven. Here's White again. And it's intercepted. Picked up by Jerome Brown. He'll go. Touchdown, Mississippi State. his football life. Well, I'll tell you, he might as well be in Disneyland right now because this is a lineman's fantasy. Just to be there, pick the ball up, pick it off, pick up a fumble, whatever, and get into the end zone. And there he is. Wow. This guy's a junior college transfer, only played one year of high school football. And I would imagine they'll have to play a long time to have that kind of opportunity again. Point after attempt by Gardner is up. And the kick is good. And it's 17 to 3, Mississippi State. I'll guarantee you right now, they're on the sidelines, patting Jerome Brown on the back. And Jerome is saying, hey, guys, I'm sure happy this didn't happen at the 50 yard line because I wouldn't have made it that far. <laughs> Jackie Sherrill, uh, his team seemingly was reeling a little bit. Auburn had taken the punch to him. But all of a sudden, that interception has abruptly ended what Auburn had momentum-wise. Let's take a look at it from the defensive perspective. They're dropping back. He's looking for someone to throw the ball to. Look at Bodies Klein. That's Boyd, your man Boyd. And look at Brown. He looks like a ballet dancer as he goes up in the air. Full extension to make the catch. You know, he's got pretty soft hands for a big guy. Yes, he does. What a stunner for Pat Dye. What a lift for this Mississippi State team. Well, neither one of these teams offensively has shown the ability to score quickly in this ball game. The defense, as I said earlier, has been playing outstanding football. They've turned to make the big play. Well, as it's just been pointed out by Mike Swanson, our statistician, all 17 points for Mississippi State have come off of Auburn turnovers. That's being very opportunistic. And the thing that you just mentioned, you were impressed by Mississippi State's ability to fly around, stay after people. This boy flying through the air had to affect what Stan White was trying to do on that particular play. All and Jerome Brown took over from there. All we have to do is put a cape on and paint a big S. <laughs> <laughs> Gardner kicking off. This is Thomas Bailey at the five-yard line. He'll bring it up to the 15, the 20, got a lane to the 35, the 40, to the 45, and knock down. And that might give Auburn another lift. Tony Harris over there, a 41-yard kickoff return. Boy, Bailey's exciting. Freshman out of Enterprise, Alabama. Did so many big plays. As long as an 83-yard punt return this year. I'd like to see where he's going to do if he's healthy. He's got a bad ankle. Still affecting him just a little bit. In fact, they can't even hardly practice him. They can't practice him at a wide receiver spot due to that ankle that you just talked about. This is the best field position Auburn has had to start a drive all afternoon long as they start from the 46-yard line. 13 seconds left in the third. All right, will start over again. Gives to Otis Mounds. And now he wedges it out close to the midfield strike. And that should be the last snap of this third quarter. 17-3, to three, Mississippi All State leading Auburn. Jackie Sherrill's team looking for their fifth win, which was that's their victory output of a year ago. We'll return with more action between Mississippi State and Auburn after this message and a word from our ABC station. This Mississippi State team is 15 minutes away from pulling an upset here, and today's 17 points are the most scored since 1984. Auburn had the ball most of the time in the third quarter, but they still got outscored in the quarter, 7-3. to three. Here's Reed McMillan, the fullback, bouncing off the people to the 45. Let's look now at the stats. As we mentioned, all 17 points of this game have come off of turnovers, and there have been four of them. Four of them for Auburn, and you see Auburn has 233 yards total offense to 151 for Mississippi State, but Mississippi State has enjoyed great field position throughout most of this ballgame. Yeah. And, of course, the touchdown by Jerome Brown 
on the interception. Linda, add to that, Auburn had 109 yards in the third quarter to Mississippi State's 27. And still, they were outscored in that quarter. Here's Otis Mounds. Mounds taking it inside the 45, picks up a first down. It was third and one, and he gets it. Keel Coleman made the stop. I'll tell you what, this is an uphill battle. You talk about a character check, Auburn's got it because it's not going to get any easier. With Florida coming here next week with a high-powered offense, Georgia and Alabama down the road, Pat Dye concerned with the distractions this week, concerned that the season could slip away from him if they don't win this one today. 14 minutes left in it. First down. White play action. Pressure coming from the inside, throws up the field. Hurt. At the 16 yard line, held it by Kelvin Knight. 27 yard gain on the play. And he's saying, Hallelujah, we finally got one downfield. Gacy with his 14th catch of the year. 27 yard gain. You see here, he just develops against the zone coverage. He gets time. There's some pressure coming from the back side. And he gets the ball away. It's just like a short flag route. The ball is actually thrown inside. So Casey has to make a good move to spin to the inside. As he does, he hangs on the ball because he takes a lick. The senior out of Foley, Alabama. First down, just outside the 15. White play action, fake again. Double pumping, throwing. He completes with the hall. The tight end runs is out of bounds, short of the five. Another first down. The 11-yard gain on the play. Well, they're trying to make it happen. Prior, prior to this possession, Gary, I was thinking, well, Auburn has moved the ball on long drives. They take a five to six minutes on his long drives this afternoon. So that means they're going to need at least 12, 13 minutes in this third and fourth quarter to try and get those two touchdowns to draw the game to even. You saw Pat Sullivan wigwagging it in. Pat Dye conferring with him on the side. First and goal, just short of the five-yard line. Stan White has Dale Overton in motion. Play action, bootlegging to the near side. He's going to try to take it in. Stan White is not known for his running as much as his passing, but he has run the ball so effectively today. Well, you can see here he does not have brilliant speed, but the man who has a chance to stop him is number 48. Torrance Brown, you see right there, he throws his hands up because he thinks he's going to throw the football. He has just enough sideline to, to squeeze into the end zone. Boy, that didn't take long. Six plays, 54 yards, a minute and 55 seconds. That's that long play that they've been looking for. They strike, and they have not been able to strike that quickly very often. You know, well, that's what I was alluding to in terms of all the time they needed in the first half and third quarter to drive the football because they didn't have the big plays. They had the big yardage. They're just working methodically down the field. Now, are they going to go for two here? I think they're going to go for two. Watch the defense here. They bite on the fake there. They all move a little bit to their right. He holds them with the fake pass and just gets in the end zone in front of Nate Williams, 95. We had a delay. We have a man shaken up, Nate Williams, the nose guard. He was out of our view on the play on the near sideline, and he's walking off. Williams has played so well today, and he'll leave for a while. Now, Auburn's indicating they're going to go for two here. They move the ball off center field, off the left side. And let's see what they do. Now, if they would go for two, they could come back later, of course, and win the football game with a touchdown. Now, Gary, if Nate Williams can't come back in the ball game, this is going to be critical in terms of their defense and their ability to stop Auburn. Well, you can see what Auburn's done thus far on two-point conversions. They're three of four. And here they go. 17-9, they're going to try to make it 17-11. Casey Overton's put to the near side. McMillan and Frazier are the running backs. Overton will come in motion. Hand off Frazier. Did he do that? Yeah, he did. Release the bird. Not yet. <laughs> well... 17-11, Mississippi State, but Auburn's on the move. Auburn going for two, cuts it 17-11. Let's look at it again. And take a look, Chris Gray, number 68, is blocking a pack of dogs right here. Actually takes out three. A couple of guys, Jerome Brown, have a chance to make the stop. Boyd, they miss it, and he keeps his balance. 
and Joe Frazier gets into the end zone. Top hard nose running. There was the scoring drive. White scoring on a five-yard bootleg. Frazier going for the two-point conversion. So they come back, they score a touchdown, they tied it up, could win it with a point after. And the point to be made is that Michigan, this Mississippi State team defensively may be getting very tired because the offense hasn't had the football all that much. They've had only two possessions prior to this one. Here comes Tony James. And he is stiffened up there as he comes to the 21-yard line. And Auburn is right now playing with great emotion. Chris Jones made the stop. He's on that special teams coverage unit. Senior walk-on. Michael Davis got the first touchdown of the game from 15 yards out. Gardner came back to make a 10 to nothing on a 35-yard field goal. On Wild, after missing one earlier, came back and connected from 18. Jerome Brown picked off a white pass, rumbled 36 yards. And a moment ago, Stan White bootlegged it in. They went for two, and it's 17-11, the Bulldogs. Robinson pitches to Williamson. Goes nowhere. And this crowd right now, as noisy as they are, I wonder how it affects the team that has no huddle. Well, the crowd's been saving that most of all afternoon and already to help this team. It's not going to be that big a factor here, Gary, because most of the town comes out of this stadium. But they have a little more trouble communicating, I would think. Robinson looking back at the official. Second down, 12. Try to yell some instructions out. Mississippi State leading it 17-11. Have Williamson in motion. Robinson pitches on a reverse. It's coming off to Harris, and Harris comes out to the 28, and it's knocked down by Corey Barlow. Short of the first down. Fred Smith was over there, knocking him down there, and of course that crowd noise rule will be getting into that procedure should it be necessary before the sellout crowd. There it is. The referee needs to call a timeout. Notifies the captain. The PA makes an announcement. Timeout or five-yard penalty if the timeouts are exhausted. Five-yard penalty for each additional infraction. I don't think Robbins is looking for relief. He's just trying to get information disseminated to his teammates. Third and three. Robinson throwing far side. James fell it hard in the open field by Alex Thomas. Oh, that's a big time hit, Gary. A big time hit. He makes his catch. He's got a one on one situation. Maybe he puts a move on him. He could be streaking down the sideline. That's one of the first times in this ball game I've seen someone from this Auburn secondary just come firing up, not worrying about where he might run, but said, I'm putting my helmet right on the numbers, and he takes it right there. <laughs> He had a hip flexor injury, suffered Monday, did not start the game, but he's playing down the stretch. Riley to punt the football. Beautiful punt. Bailey packing up at the 25. He's got it there. Giving ground. Good coverage by the dogs. And they come up a couple of more yards. Lisi is over there. Wesley Lisi down to make the stop. 48-yard punt by Riley. Three-yard return. 11.04 to go. Auburn down by six. Interesting point we should bring up. David Hauser, the sports information director, indicating Auburn has not lost consecutive games at home since 1978. And they find themselves down by six with 11.04 to go in this game. Behind a scrimmage now at the 27th. Stan White in the round to Orlando Parker to the 30, 35, 40. And Parker still on his feet. He's inside Bulldog territory at the 48-yard line. Well, Pat Dye has used his trick plays off and on throughout the season. He's not been afraid to go with the reverse. Take a look at this one. Look at everything that goes on. There's the fake uh, tackle. There's another fake there. And finally, the handoff to Parker. He's in the backfield, but he gets tremendous blocking out in front. Look at number 70 out there. Meeks, who's the center, who gets to the outside. I tell you, also through a block was Ray McMillan. He peeled back and cut the guy down that was coming from behind. 24-yard gain. Pitch comes to Frazier. This will come put the ball away. Comes into the 45-yard line area. Shot back by Herman Carroll. 
has pointed out Mississippi State's defense has been on the field so much in the second half. They made a big defensive play of a 36-yard intercepted return for a touchdown. But it's been Auburn with the football most of the time and pecking away. They've cut it to six. Line of scrimmage, the 46 of Mississippi State. Second down, seven yards to go. Overton split to the near side, Casey to the top. White on a sprint out, being chased, and broken up, intended for Overton. Luster over there to make the deflection of the ball. I don't think it would have been caught anyway. I think he'd been out of bounds. Jerome Brown, who had the interception earlier, was putting some pressure on White. Okay, Jerome Brown has run a long way in this game with the interception and on that particular play. So we have, we should also say that Nate Williams, number 95, the man who came out of that defensive lineup before the two-point attempt is now back in the ball game. We didn't know if he was going to come back or not. Third down and seven now for Auburn as Alex Smith comes in at tailback. McMillan and Smith in the backfield. Casey and Overton split out. Dan White straight back, throwing far side. Casey can't get it there. Tony Harris defending on the play. White really upset at himself. You know, this guy, Stan White, has all the tools. It just isn't all together yet. Yeah, but watch Harris stick to Herbert Casey. Well, Harris sticks to him, but Casey just gets to the outside. He's other steps, and then goes by him. He's got him beat, looking back at the ball. If he had gotten by him clean, he might have been there for that. So the Bulldogs hold. George will come in and punt. Uh, Tony James hits it very high. Mississippi State up, be careful, doesn't hit one of their teammates. As uh, that ball bouncing around crazily inside the 10, takes an Auburn roll to the six. At the six, Mississippi State has it. A 40-yard punt, 17-11, the Bulldogs. Plays from the line of scrimmage in the second half. They've had the ball only six and a half minutes. Auburn's had it 32 snaps for over 13 minutes, 13.44 to be exact. So Mississippi State needs to rest their defense a little bit. Michael Davis tries to get some running room, pounds it out close to the nine-yard line. Stop was made by Tim Cromarty. Top 10, Florida State LSU later from a place that's not easy to win at LSU. Miami, Arizona tonight. Washington rolling again. Sailing along. Yes, sir. Notre Dame beating those guys from Troy. Ninth consecutive year. I didn't say that, you did. I did. Oh, look at Nebraska, Missouri. Second down eight. And off to Davis again. He's got the first down across the 20 to the 21. That is a big first down for Mississippi State. Darrell Crawford and Benny Pierce combined on the stop. 14-yard gain. There's a Nebraska-Missouri score. California, they'll get ready now to play USC next week. 6 the Bears only lost to the Huskies of Washington. Line of scrimmage at the 21-yard line, first down. Nine minutes left in the game. And Robinson this time did never get the ball exchanged. He just fell down or was tripped. I don't know what happened on this play. He goes down and loses yardage. So to bring up second and 13. And Jack Ashiro makes a note of that. He don't want that to happen again. Right there, he's rolling back and just left leg gets caught up with the fullback. It looked like, yeah, one of his backs went by him. I think it was Davis, the fullback, he kind of cut the legs out from under him. Now, Jackie Sherrill is conferring on the far sideline, he's arguing about something. Second half comparison, time of possession, remarkable. Auburn, 13 minutes 44 seconds over 730 from Mississippi State. He was complaining over there at the cheerleaders. He's trying to get him to quiet down a little bit so his team can come up to the line of scrimmage. And he now talks to the officials about it to warn him. Hard to hear. Second and 13. Robinson. Little shuttle pass to Davis. Davis gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. 
You know, it's so important to stay at home. When I say stay at home, when you've got a responsibility as a defensive lineman against this option offense where the ball's going from side to side and will come back to you if you decide to drop back and throw, you've got to stay home and be prepared for that. Auburn's doing a good job in the second half of being ready for the trick plays coming back. The gain of one, it'll be third and nine now. Two receivers to the near side. Harris is split out. Drawing by James. There's a little shovel pass against Flags on the play as Davis, short of the first down, tackled with the 26. I think it'll be illegal motion. I have been Williamson moving the back. I think that's what it was. Well, they would refuse this, I would think, and bring up fourth down. That's what they're going to do. So fourth down coming up, and Riley will come in and punt the football. Monday night, the Chiefs against the Raiders, and Nigerian nightmare, Christian Okoye, and this guy, Steve DeBerg, who you talk about ball face. He handles the ball so very, very well. Well, they, they put some razzle-dazzle on Buffalo on the last time on Monday Night Football. The Raiders have a great record to win. Well, they trail Denver in the West. High snap. Riley has it up. It's loose at the 20, but Auburn will have it. It was Carly Barlow again. Corey Barlow with his second block of the day. It was special teams last year. Crawford blocking the extra point. Allowed Auburn to come away with a one-point win. Special teams today. Corey Barlow, number 12, coming in, blocking two putts. Big plays by the Auburn defense. Riley had not had one block previous to today. Two of them, one of them partially, this one completely. Auburn takes over at the 20-yard line. And they're going to blow this play dead. I'll tell you, Riley taking a long time getting that punt underway. Illegal procedure now against Auburn. It'll be first and 15. So let's go at it again. I tell you, he got all of this one. He certainly did. He just comes in. He's using his speed. The high snap helps. Smart. He gets out in front of the punter. He doesn't go at the punter's foot. Blocks it with his whole body. Tom Hollingsworth was the snapper who got the ball too high. As an end result, precipitated that problem. And it's now first and 15. It's the first time that Auburn has started at the Mississippi State end of the field with any series today. Waiting for the 25 now. From the shotgun is White. Look out, he's buried. That is Wesley Leasy, a sophomore of Greenville, Mississippi. They say his motor's always running. He's a juggernaut back there, and he comes pounding through and sacks him. Absolutely nobody blocks him. The running back number five, Joe Frazier, just leads the backfield on a pattern. I have to believe that Frazier has to check to block him first if he's coming, then release on the pattern. He does it. Wesley just comes in with a big, big sack. They say when he makes a mistake, somebody pays for it. Leasy, he is so revved up. Loss of 10. Second and 25 now for Auburn. Line of scrimmage, the 34. White back again. Blitz coming up the middle. Flushed out of the pocket. White in trouble, throws, broken up. Casey, the intended receiver. And Edward Williams defending on the play. Well, as often happens on a broken play, Third and 25, somebody pops and open and he's scrambling around there. He had the tight end, Victor Hall, 87, who just broke loose down the middle of the field. But under that kind of pressure, you cannot always see the whole field. He had one second left on the play clock before he snapped the ball. And I'll tell you right now, this Mississippi State defense has been something. They have moved this ball backwards. They've got him out at the 34. A third down coming up. Third and 25. Look at that. Ten hurries on the day. That's, that's pressure. Yes, sir. Sometimes his hurries are better than the sack because they'll throw the ball up for grabs. And today, picking off the pass. Back to throw is wide again. Being flushed out of the pocket. Being chased by Boyd, and he got it. I tell you, Daniel Boyd runs like a bat. Ball coming loose. But uh, blown dead there at the 40-yard line. It's fourth down, and Auburn went backwards. They absolutely went backwards. They lost 21 yards on this series by penalty or losses. We talked about Stan White not having great foot speed. 
you see Boyd here, a middle linebacker, just hunts him down. Wow. So now, the punt the football will be Terry George. And a freshman going back to field this one. He's going to get away from it. And the ball bouncing inside the five. And did they down it in the field of play? I think they did it to one. Beautiful cover. 38-yard punt by this guy, Terry George, who won the job this year in the preseason. This reminder, time permitting, we'll have the thrifty car rental post-game report as we'll be bringing you scores, highlights throughout the country. Right now, a lot of football left here. 548 left. And again, Mississippi State is backed up deep. Last time, they were able to get out of there. Now, they have the ball at the two. That's where they mark it. 17-11, Mississippi State with the lead. They go to the ball, and Robinson wedges it out, brings it out to the five. Darrell Crawford made the stop there. The offense has to be a little bit nervous right now, Gary. The last few possessions, they have not been able to get the ball out with any degree of success. They've had two punch blocks on them, so they don't have a whole lot of confidence in that aspect of the game at this moment. They really need something to happen here, a big run. It just breaks for them to take them out beyond the 20-yard line. You know they're going to take as much time off the clock as they okay. can. There's 13 seconds on the play clock. 5-15 on the game clock. Robinson gives up. And the fullback doubles. Davis doubled and Auburn's got it. That's the first Mississippi State turnover. That is Mike Hina, the free safety who recovered it. Opportunity. And this is it for Auburn. The defense has been creating opportunities for the offense all afternoon. Big hole. He gets through. As he's going down, looks like he's just bringing his arms up. The ball pops loose. Wow. Last game, the other fullback fumbled on the one-yard line against Memphis State. And now Davis has fumbled, sets it up at the 11-yard line. Auburn now trying to pounce on this one. And up to Frazier, inside the five for the one. That's the very same play they tried to run after they blocked the punt. And there was a penalty and they moved him back made it first and 15. Frazier takes it this time inside the five on the two-yard line. Auburn has played catch-up all afternoon long with a chance now to tie with a touchdown and take the advantage with the PAT. How big is that going for two conversion now? Yep. Takes all the pressure off of the decision, doesn't it? Absolutely. After that, you don't have to worry about two. And now Auburn's going to use their first timeout. Stan White to the near sideline. 4.35 left to go. The Tigers down by six when we come back. Gary Bender along with Len Swan in four possessions inside the 20. That's what Auburn's been able to do, but now they got a chance to go ahead in this football game. There's something I'm going to point out to you, Gary, after this next play. You can see where they've started their drives from the 49. Reed McMillan didn't get in. He did not get in. Luster stopped him. Oh. They're playing great defense down here. I just want to point out to you, Gary, on the scoreboard, there's a noise meter. Look at the bottom of the scoreboard, the red line. As when the people yell and scream, that line continues to extend and goes all the way around, <laughs> measuring the sound here. And for a while, it goes all the way around that scoreboard. Now, what's significant about that play is it's first and goal now. They had a second down and one. They pick up a first and goal at the half-yard line. Remember, early in the game, Mississippi State was able to keep them out. 417 the clock running first and goal just inside the one handoff mcmillan trying to climb over the top the second effort is good enough to do that six points mcmillan hit a pile up at that line of scrimmage but no one really had a hold of him. He didn't have control of him, and he just kept driving and then popped up in the air. Take a look at it. He hits, he stopped right here, and nobody has him. He's just laying on the pile. And they have a face mask, it looks like, as well on that one. And, and Stan now White. Stan White has been hurt. White is hurt, and I did not see how he got hurt. 
We have a timeout by Auburn that will be their second timeout. We'll sort this all out. We're going to go away. It's tied up at 17, 4.09 to go. Lynn, let's see if we can pick up the injury to Stan White on this touchdown. We can. He pick, as he hands the ball off, number 30 comes in from the outside, Tony Harris, and he leg whips him unintentionally, of course, hits him right about the knee. And you see he just buckles him. Here he is now trying to shake it off. Now this is for the lead. Van Wilde, point after is up. And he hit the goalpost. He hit the goalpost. It's 17 all. Would you believe that? That's his third miss this year on a point after. Well, last year it was 17-16. Auburn blocked a point after to win it. This one, let's watch it. Let's take a look. Everything is good from the snap to the placement. He hits it. No, he didn't hit the goalpost. I thought he did. He just missed it completely. I thought it looked like it bounded off oh! of the pipe, but it actually hit the... Well, last year... It was behind there. Look at Cheryl. Last year, with the wider goalpost, it wouldn't have been a problem. Upright. Well, didn't make any difference there, did it? Well, boy, a tie right now at 17 all, 4.09 to go. Robert has used two of their timeouts. And Lyle will be kicking off again. Hey, if you don't if you don't cross the T, you have an L. You gotta pay attention to every little detail. Wow. First downs this half, Auburn with 12. Mississippi State has only one. 17 all the score. On Wild kicking off. Gonna be Tony James, and he'll not bring it out, and they'll come to the 20 yard line. So the Bulldogs need to get something going offensively. It's Auburn in the second half has been a different football team. All the points in this game, by the way, have come off of turnovers, including the last touchdown. Both these coaches play the win. As you can tell here, NCAA active co coaches, their winning percentage, Pat Dye, 5, 72 percent. Zachary Cheryl is just below. And of course, Tommy Bowden, one of Bobby's offspring, the offensive coordinator for Auburn. First down to the 20. The crowd into it again. Mississippi State, ready to roll. Handoff comes to Prince, who's the fullback now, and he goes nowhere. Boy, I'd say this Auburn team's playing with emotion right now. Well, the Tate, number 76, is in on that stop, tried to strip him a little bit of the football. Also with Gerald Crawford. Well, this guy's had a lot of weight problems. They say they take his snacks away from him at night. <laughs> Down to 310. He came in at 344, 322 pounds. He's got some talent. A junior out of Decatur, Georgia. Second and 10. Robinson up the field and a great catch by Willie Harris. That's enough for a first down. Fred Smith hit him hard. Number six unloaded on him. But Harris hangs on 12-yard gain on the play. Well, they like to go after Smith if at all possible because they just don't think his coverage skills are that great. Well, I tell you, Harris is a big league player, isn't he? He is tough at that wide receiver spot. First down at the 32, 320 left in the game. Robinson on the option, cuts it up the field, gets a couple of yards. Reggie Barlow played a strong game today. Makes the stop on Sleepy. It's going to bring up second down, eight yards to go. Three minutes now left. What is it they say about ties? Are like kissing your sister? Oh, and you know Pat Dye never would play for a tie. That's why he went for two early in the ball game. What was it? I hate Fry told me last year all these years of coaching. He's never played for a tie. You never can avoid that in every instance. Here is a pass completion to Kenny Roberts, bringing it out to the 38-yard line. Fred Smith is over there to make the stop. In fact, he said Bo Schembechler came to him one time after Iowa and Michigan had tied. He came over and said, boy, what a waste of time this was. <laughs> <laughs> one of the ugliest games ever played, Dan, was my sophomore year at USC against UCLA, and we played for a 7-7 tie. 
and somebody lit up one of those stink bombs in the stands. We didn't mind the smell because we stunk out the joint worse than we played the game. Two ten left in this game now. Third down and three for the Bulldogs. Two oh six left in the game. Robinson pitches far side to Robert. He's across the fifty. He breaks it. He's gonna go to the thirty. Kenny Roberts to the fifteen. Ten five touchdown. across the field, turns around, and the pitch is very quick. He hits before any of the inside pursuit can get there, picks up some key blocks, and this is just a sprint that he is not going to lose. Well, he tied the Mississippi High School 100-yard dash record, and you can see how quickly he got 61 yards down the field. The point after is good. Gardner makes it 24-17. The previous long run for Roberts this year was 18 yards. This one was 61. What a stunner for the Auburn Tigers. Talk about big plays. You know, you get in college football and you get a lot of emotional highs and lows. Certainly the Auburn defense thought this game might have been wrapped up for them. They could create the turnovers, give the offense a chance. They think they're going to get the lead. Suddenly it's a tie ball game. They find themselves in the football field trying to stop this Mississippi State team. They've been close to making big plays all afternoon, and the offense finally breaks them up. Well, you know, Auburn's had a lot of trouble with the option game this year. Texas came in. They changed quarterbacks. They ran the option effectively. They had not run the option that much today. In fact, are you ready for this? That's the only carry today for Kenny Roberts. Is that the only one? The only carry he has today. 61 yards. What's that average out to? 61 yards. Thought you were going to slip that one by me, huh, Gary? 24-17 now. And this crowd, this homecoming crowd, is obviously stunned. Gardner now to kick off. Remember now, Auburn's only got one timeout remaining. Very short and very high. The up back, Alex Smith will take it at the 30-yard line. And he's got some running room. 35. They'll try to get out of bounds and knocked out of bounds at the 38. Tony Harris over there to make the stop. Now the Tigers have 1.42 left. They have one timeout left. And they're down 24-17. And Auburn will have to take the field offensively with a banged up Stan White coming in the quarterback form. That was the question as to whether he would return, and he is in there. You see him, number 11, that whip play thing. First and 10. And as an end result, we'll see how he'll be able to perform as he goes to the shotgun. Line of scrimmage, he's on 39. Three wide outs on the play. White back, has that leg wrapped, as you can see. Throws up the field complete to Frazier, and Frazier looks like he has the first down. Goes out of bounds and stops the clock with 136. Tony Harris over there. Juan Long also. You know, the way he got leg whipped, Gary, it could be anything from a strained ligament to a bruise. Uh, you, you just don't know. And a first down for Albert at the 49. Now it's his focus beyond his own personal pain and the injury. Make the right play. Be aware of the pressure. Find those open receivers. Here comes the blitz up the middle. Gets rid of it to Casey. Oh, was that a near six points? Casey diving at the 17-yard line. And you can see the exasperation white. He had a touchdown on that one, and he made the throw that he needed. No, it's easy to be up here in, in this booth and criticize and say, you know, what he should have done. Clearly, Casey's got him beat here. He's wide open. You ought to loft this ball, give him a little chance to run under that, Gary. It's an easier catch for the receiver. It's a safer pass. Second down, 10. Just short of the 50-yard line. A minute 30 left in the game. Three wide outs again. Two to the near side of the field. White back, throwing up the middle of the field. Behind the intended receiver, Alvin Knight. 
Miles Bailey, the intended receiver, and Knight with his second interception of the game. Five turnovers by Auburn. Well, Zach and Cheryl's team at had their homecoming game against Memphis State, lost it. In here, the homecoming game for Auburn, upset them. There's the pass from behind Bailey. He's still got a chance to make the catch, but the bounce is off his arms. In to the waiting arms of Kelvin Knight. Five turnovers, two interceptions by Knight. And the assistant coaches at Mississippi State next to us are jumping up and down. A minute 23 left in the game from the 33. Robinson tries to take it forward. Again, Auburn has only one timeout to stop the clock. Clock running with 1.15. The Mississippi State last year under Rocky Poker had a five and six record. The last four years, they were 15 and 29. It had been five years since the Bulldogs won two SEC games in a season. And today, if they hang on here, they'll go two and two in the SEC. Jackie Sherrill's won every place he's been. And he's got this football team now. If they hang on here at five and three, and again, one of the big surprises in college football this season. A 61-yard run by Roberts is the only point scored today that didn't come off of a turnover. As Robinson wedges it forward, and now Auburn's going to use their final timeout. 37 seconds left. You can see the Bulldogs are going to go back to Starkville, a very happy group of young men. Both quarterbacks today have been playing some very tough football, both sustained injuries, were hit hard, were harassed. They've been there throughout the ball game. I'm so impressed with the SEC, the athletes they have. It's a different brand of football than you might see out of the Pac-10 or the Big Ten, but it is something. It is a happening here. It's been a pleasure to come down here. Auburn once again. Mississippi State with 37 seconds to kill on the clock. So this now will assume Mississippi State wins. They're two and two. Auburn has lost two. So really, Alabama now and Florida are in very good shape. And of course, Florida comes in here next week, a game that you will see on ABC. The Gators against the Tigers. Robinson again, straight ahead. They can't stop the clock. 35 yard line, the clock winding down. And Pat Dye, who was so concerned about how his team would play today, and Jackie Sherrill and Watson Brown starting to celebrate. This is a big win. You talk about a big win for a coach in his first year. Texas was big, but this is even bigger. And the clock will expire. They have now...